So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome to another React Native tutorial in which I'm gonna basically quickly show you how to um, you know set up an authentication system real quick in React Native which would work like an actual authentication system like getting data from server and back. So what I want to do here is um, first of all go to command line and this would be a bit tricky to set up on react native especially for me because i'm using a real device here so i would need to do a couple of things which might not make sense to you i'll explain i'll try to explain my best but let's just see so right now i'm going to create another server here and i'm going to cd into that and what i'm going to do is just basically create a very simple python or maybe like php script whatever you prefer you can do that Basically, we just want a simple endpoint um, which could actually read our data and uh, basically respond to it. So I'm going to say index.php here and uh, let's just do that real quick. So I'm going to say um, username is like post username, password is like post password and it's, it's been quite some time I've done work in PHP um, I used to work with it a lot in past but uh, do not really work it work that much with it right now um, I believe we can just echo one or zero based on the stuff obviously you would like to have a JSON response or something like that but uh, I'm just keeping it real simple right now and I believe that should be it so um, okay so what we want to do next is just say php s um, let's just open it at uh, 9000 port cool so now we are listening on port 1111 now the thing is that uh, since I'm running this application on my phone my phone does not know that uh, the server is running at uh, this Mac MacBook, right? But if you are, if you have observed, how does how does React know whenever I hit save here or whenever I change a component? How does it know to reload? How does it get the updated code? Well, when you do React Native Wait, on Android, your mission what's the last thing React Native is do awesome is that by going it that reverses and proxies and learning various the 8081 port of your of phone to 8081 port of second. your Good desktop. So what happens is that localhost, port number localhost port number 8081 on your phone is basically the same as localhost port 8081 on your desktop. So anything you send from your phone to localhost port 8081 would be redirected to your Mac or to your desktop or anything, right? So how does it do that? Well, to do that, what you have to do is write ADB. Now let me just zoom in here. ADB reverse TCP. Um, for our case, it is uh, 1111 right and for both client and server that is android device and me i want both the ports to be same you can actually specify which port should be mirrored to which one right so there you go that's it so now um whatever i calls i make to local host 1111 would be redirected to my computer now i do not really need to know my ip address in this case for example something like this for my computer to actually connect to my phone so that's kind of convenient all right a lot of talking going on here how about some work so let's just get back to our home and what I'm gonna do now is right here say fetch localhost 1111 and uh, I'm gonna say JSON dot stringify or maybe like we could because we are using PHP you can just basically pass in like username is username and password is password right 
and once this is done response and obviously this is not like that it should be inside body and it should obviously have a method of post just like a regular server call once we have that what I want to do is just console.warn result for now let's just see and obviously this is the worst way to debug an application I know about that I'm gonna tell you something really pre really interesting about react native it has got a great debugger but uh, we're gonna come to that later on because it's kind of an advanced debugger as well but it'll make your life a lot of simple so right now let's just stick with it let's just do a blank login and uh, 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 what the hell I still have these if conditions let's just comment this out and let's just do a blank login and uh, we get the response as oh obviously because you have to convert it to a text uh, dot then actual response I'm gonna console dot one response it's been quite some time I've used fetch API so we get zero that's perfectly fine right so now if I go back <laughs> which I should not be able to but uh, since we are just developing this app let's just write correct details here admin admin hit login okay we get zero again are we receiving correct data at the server all right so I just changed the data to JSON sending it as a JSON string and um, guess what PHP now recognizes it kind of so if I can just show you content here we have now obviously I'm not setting the headers here to be JSON so that's the thing I'm skipping here I know about that but obviously again it's not a real server so we can kind of like adjust with it so anyways I'm just gonna comment out this and uh, we're gonna get back to our um, real business here so let's just try admin now admin admin hit login we get a one that's cool so what we want to do now is uh, basically move this logic of returning to here so I'm gonna say if response is equal to um, <laughs> one we're gonna navigate here else I'm gonna alert so that's it basically now if I hit save you can see that if I tried to do bad login username password mismatch if I try to do actual admin and admin hit login there we are to the dashboard and you can see that it's all server side implemented logic no username password plain text are available here so yeah that's basically it for this video and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching i'll see you then in the next one